A structural engineer can justify his work when he ensures that the building is safe, economic, functional and buildable. All these four points are very important. However, in order to make a building economic, it's very important that you understand some of the code provisions exactly. You need to have the ability to interpret things in the right way, improvise in the right way and think logically in order to achieve economy. Hi all, this is Premjit here from Civilera.com. In today's video, we are going to look at a clause in IS-456 which talks about minimum steel in columns. You may think it's an easy topic. Yes, it is. But there is one clause which needs a careful look which will help you to fine tune your understanding. I want to bring your attention to clause number 26.5.3.1 in IS-456. The cross-sectional area of longitudinal reinforcement shall be not less than 0.8 percentage nor more than 6 percentage of the gross cross-sectional area of the column. So let's focus on this minimum percentage 0.8 percent. What generally engineers understand from this is that if you have a 450 by 450 column with gross area of 450 square then the minimum area that we need is 0.8 percentage of that 450 square area. So that becomes 450 multiplied by 450 multiplied by 0.8 and uh, the percentage is 100. So if you calculate this, it comes to about 450 multiplied by 450 multiplied by 0.8 percent divided by 100. So that gives you about 1620 millimeter square a uh, minimum steel requirement. Now in case if the strength requirement is more, of course you will have more steel requirement. This is the minimum percentage that is required as per this clause. But then what we generally miss is that in clause B you can refer IS 456. Here is that clause 26.5.3.1. You can see the clause number B over here, which generally people miss to clearly understand. I have stated it here in any column that has a larger cross sectional area than that required to support the load, the minimum percentage of steel shall be based upon the area of concrete required to resist the direct stress and not upon the actual area. So, what it means is that if your column is carrying very less load, then even if it's oversized, then you don't have to give 0.8 percentage based on the gross area. Say for instance, in a project, if you have a lot of columns, which are 450 square in size, but then say it's lightly loaded, it doesn't have any load on that. And if you consider the load, say it's hardly 100 kilonewton, very less load on a 450 square column. In that case, if 100 kilonewton demands a size of only 200 by 200 in order to take that 100 kilonewton load then your 0.8 percentage can be based on 200 by 200 size so that will make the total steel quite less say for instance it will be only 0.8 percentage of 200 by 200 and uh, percentage means you have to divide it by 100 so this will give you hardly very less steel 0.8 multiplied by 200 multiplied by 200 and divided by 100 will give you hardly 320 millimeter square steel. So if you don't know this particular condition, then you might end up giving more steel than what you really need. Please note that this is oversized, but then there could be some reason that architecturally you need that column to be for 50 square say for instance you have 10 columns in a project and all of these columns are heavily loaded and only one column is very lightly loaded because of whatever reasons it is maybe that is a dummy column a show purpose column or whatever it is there is a small column requirement somewhere here say maybe a sit out or something like that the architect due to the aesthetic reason won't all the columns to be of the same size and want to increase the size of this smaller column also to 450. So in such a situation, if it is having very less load, 
and you are increasing the size to 450 square then your minimum percentage is not based on the actual gross area but then based on the actual required area to take that particular load existing in that particular column so that can save quite a lot of steel for you so that is the relevance of this particular clause b i will also show you an e tabs model and then show you such a real situation in a project so i am taking the e tabs model i have already designed and kept this particular rebars in this i'm going to take only the columns from this now so object type and columns i will create a new view so that i can show the column steel in more detail let me display the steel reinforcement percentage design concrete frame design display design info and i'm going to make the total rebar percentage as the display here so you can see clearly the display so let me go to one of the elevations for better clarity so let me go to elevation number a and uh, maybe for a better clarity let me go to another section so here you can see if i zoom in the lower level if you focus on this particular column you can see that in the lower level you need more steel but as i go up you can see from here onwards your percentage has become 0.8 now please note these columns are probably oversized so let me show you the column size is 450 by 450 even in the lower level it is 450 by 450 so what you can here do is this 0.8 percentage which e tabs display necessarily need not be the minimum percentage based on the gross area it could be based on the required area so if you know this particular information you can probably economize your whole design process so i hope you like this video i hope this information is handy for your design and projects and if so please like the video follow the channel and share this piece of information thank you very much for following this channel we'll see you with a different information in the next video very soon wish you an incredible learning